Welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games, where we feed our people with relatable content and our victory condition is your satisfaction. I'm Harry, and today we have another playthrough and review. Today I'm going to be playing through and reviewing this game right here, Capital Punishment. Full disclaimer, this is a paid playthrough and review. For more information on the game, check in the description box down below for details and a link. Now, Capital Punishment is a party-style game, the party argument game to be in particular, and it's for three or more players. There is no outer limit to how many players can play this game, theoretically. The ages, or recommended age, is 17 and older, and the estimated game length is 30 to 90 minutes, although I imagine that 90 minutes would be for a much larger group. Now, this is what the game looks like set up inside the box. All we have are cards, but there are a ton of cards. Uh, we have two different decks. Most of your cards will comprise the main deck, and the main deck is composed of... Uh, mostly celebrities, famous personalities in pop culture or in the world of politics, in, in mainstream society. And it also contains additional action cards that can be beneficial to players. And I'll explain later on as we show how the game plays. And then we have a second, much smaller deck, which is referred to as the Punishment deck. This is called Capital Punishment after all. And basically, in this game, players are taking on the role of prosecutors who are trying to uh, convict uh, the cards, the characters that they are playing throughout the course of the game. Now, at the beginning of the game, for setup, we are going to deal five cards to each player. For the purposes of this video, I'll simply be simulating a three-player game. So each player is going to get five cards to start the game. Players are going to randomly determine who's going to be the starting judge. Each round, there's one player is going to take on the role of the judge, and they're going to pass that honor around clockwise going forward. So for the purposes of this video, I will start with the player here to the far left being the judge, and then the other two players are going to be the active players for the round. Now, we're going to proceed to the first phase of the round which is the opening argument phase now before this phase actually begins players can look at their cards and if they don't like the cards that they have or perhaps do not like a card that they have they can discard one card from their hand and replace it with a top card from the deck so there is that option so this player here uh first of all they've got woody allen and brad pitt so these are their two personalities. If you ever have a hand of cards that has no character, right here we have our internet provider. If you have no character that you can convict, if let's say all you have are special action cards like this appeal and subpoena card, then you are going to have to uh, have the judge randomly remove one card from your hand and replace it with a card until you finally have at least one character card in your hand. You cannot start the opening argument phase of a round without any characters in your hand. So this player here has mostly characters. They have Mel Gibson and the future uh, Brad Pitt and Matt Lauer. And they have this bribe uh, action card here. So players are each going to pick one character uh, that they're going to prosecute. So here we're going to pick Brad Pitt for leaving uh, Jennifer Aniston over here. And here, this player also got Brad Pitt. So there are duplicates of other characters. So it's put possible for multiple players to um, to try to convict the same character. This player here is going to pick uh, Mel Gibson here. Okay. okay, so now each player has chosen a character. We have Brad Pitt and we have Mel Gibson. And we will continue with the opening argument of the phase where in turn order, each player is going to make their opening argument. And you're going to make your case for the character that you've picked to be guilty of some kind of crime. And this is all part of the game. You want to be as creative as possible. You want to be as convincing as possible because you want to convince the judge. Uh, you want to be as hilarious as possible. Think outside the box. Know your judge. Know what appeals to them, whether it's cold hard logic or perhaps uh uh inappropriate humor whatever it might be that your judge you feel is uh going to accommodate it's going to listen to that's what your approach should be so brad pitt here absolutely is guilty because he had jennifer addison an amazing woman and he dumped her for angelina jolie what a crime against humanity brad pitt deserves the chair he deserves to be sentenced for life whatever lock him up and throw away the key so this player presents their opening argument and now this player here 
is going to uh, make their opening argument uh, against Mel Gibson. Uh, so uh, I don't really have much against Mel Gibson. I actually like the guy. I probably shouldn't have picked him. But you get the point. This player here is going to try to make their argument for why Mel Gibson uh, is guilty. You can make whatever argument it is. You could even make stuff up that isn't even real. Mel Gibson came and he robbed my home last night because he was jealous of me. I don't know. Anything you want. There are no limitations as far as the creativity that players can explore for their opening arguments. Now, throughout this entire process, the judge plays the role of moderator. Not only keeping track of if players get derailed, if players are talking too long, or when you should move on to the next player's turn. But the judge can interact with what the players are saying. They can ask clarifying questions or interrupt them for whatever reason you really have the authority during that round as the judge so whoever is the judge needs to needs to own that role but once we're done with the opening argument and every other player around the table has made their opening argument as to why we should prosecute their card the car, the character that they, that they chose then we move on to the challenges phase and during the challenges phase each player can make a challenge. And for their challenge, they could either choose to make another additional argument to enhance their case against the character that they're trying to convict, or they can use their challenge's window of time to make a counter-argument against another opponent around the table. Basically, try to poke holes in their argument to make the judge realize, well, you know, the case that they made wasn't that strong after all. So it's all a matter of if you feel like your argument needs a little bit more assistance or perhaps you can benefit from making someone else's argument sound stupid. Now, after each player has gone through the opening arguments phase and then the challenges phase, the judge has the hard task to pick one and only one player who made the best case who presented the best argument and that player is going to win the round so each player is going to discard the card that they picked regardless of whether they won or not but the player who the judge chose as the winner in this case we're going to say it's the brad pitt player they get to draw the top card from the punishment deck and read what it says and here it says canceled and this gives you plus one point at the end of the game and the player will keep this at in their player area and if we look at the punishment cards they have lots of different uh thematic things that happen a slap on the wrist docs uh, docs detention and they have a victory point total on the bottom now the goal of the game is to be the first player to get five points now this is a party game so players can feel free to modify it maybe you want to play a quicker game with a larger group Maybe you can make the point total shorter, like three or four points. Or maybe you're playing with a smaller group. You might want to play a longer game. You might want to make the goal six, seven, ten points. I don't know. There is that flexibility in this kind of game. Um, but the recommendation in the rules is five points. So you have the victory point on the bottom. And it ranges from zero to two. I don't think I've seen any threes. There are some negatives. So not... G gaining or winning a round is not necessarily a guarantee for the most part they are positive cards but you might time it uh in a bad way or unlucky fashion that you end up getting some negative points now the victory points are kept face up we have played my group has played a few times where we actually kept the victory points face down we found that to be pretty fun having that hidden information and also uh giving people the impression that we're closer to winning than perhaps we are or maybe sneaking up on people and because we have a two-point card or two uh being closer to victory and having people think oh well we have a little bit more time that player only has two cards uh in their capital punishment uh a hand here so maybe they're not that close to winning when after all they, that player might have four points and just be potentially one card away so you can play with hidden information again the rule books as it reads strictly keeps that point total uh face up but if your group perhaps enjoys or prefers the idea of keeping that information hidden that's also an option as well so we have the capital punishment cards which again are your victory point total now after the round is done the winner of that round collected their capital punishment card 
uh, puts it in front of their player area. Each player that actually spent a card or two or multiple cards, because there are ways of spending multiple cards in a round, each player is going to replenish their hand back to five. You should always have five cards at the beginning of the next round. We will pass the judge uh, honor to the next player clockwise. So we'll give it to this player here on the far right. And then we'll start the next round with the opening arguments. Now, I do want to talk a little bit about some of these action cards. There's lots of different cards that players can play. And not only do they have a title, but they specify what the card does and when you can play it. Here it says that this subpoena card, you play this card before submitting a name for trial. And then you pick the top three cards from the main deck. Pick one for your hand and return the other two to the main deck uh, in any order. So this is a good way of drawing not only better characters than perhaps the ones you have in your hand. Maybe you have cards of characters you do not know. And because of that or you do not know as well, you feel like you're not going to be able to make as compelling a case. So you might want to get some cards. And the subpoena is great because you get lots of cards to choose from. So hopefully there's multiple characters there. We have this appeal card which says, play this card after a punishment has been given. The judge draws another card from the punishment deck, overriding the first punishment. So you can use this if maybe you didn't like the punishment card you drew when you won a round, or maybe you didn't like the punishment card that your opponent drew when they won their round. You could always play this uh, in order to prevent that and switch things up. Now, some of these special action cards are really helpful. For example, this star prosecutor card you play this card after you have won a round of gameplay and after a punishment has been given add one point to the value of the punishment so this is a great card because you can use it and there's a couple of cards like this that allow you to get additional points uh you can use it after you score to basically add one to your score and put yourself that much closer to winning the game and this is pretty much what Capital Punishment plays like in a nutshell. It is a party-style game, uh, conducive to large groups, conducive to lots of interaction, lots of discussion. Players can take pretty much whatever approach the group allows for and the group feels comfortable for. So you can choose to be very rational, very logical, uh, scientific in your approach as far as making your prosecutions and your arguments and such. You can choose to be silly and ridiculous and off the wall. Uh, you can choose to be politically correct, politically incorrect. Again, the, the group kind of drives the direction. You got to know the players you play this with and kind of know their personalities and their idiosyncrasies. But again, it's very open-ended in that sense. It takes the form of the group. Uh, very, again, conducive to discussion and to lots of interaction, which is what you want in your party games. You don't want your party games to be too analytical or too within your head. You want players to not be thinking so much about strategy, but actually thinking about the practicality of what's taking place in the game and enjoying the energy that every player around the table contributes to the process. Really cool in that regard. Very simple as far as what the components consist of, just these cards. If you're looking for a party game in particular with an argument or a legal theme to it, this is a game you might want to consider. Again, check in the description box down below for more information, details, and a link. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for joining us here on Harry at Board Games. This is Harry saying take care, everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have fun gaming. Bye-bye.